Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Skippy. This is a, um, a set of commands, a format, the standard commands for programmable instruments. Skippy commands are separated into these sections and they're separated by colons. So here we have the first node, the second node, and the third node. And when you see these in um, documents specifying how to communicate with instruments, you often get these strange syntaxes, like you get these square brackets. And this means optional. And so this is something that we're going to have to implement. Um, commands are always separated by these colons. Um, each of these commands has two sections. It's a required section and an optional section. The required section is in uppercase, and the optional section is in lowercase. Now, Skippy is not strictly case sensitive, so this is this command could be written as instrument, or instrument, or instrument. Those are all valid, and. The required section is, of course, always required, but the optional section isn't. So you could abbreviate that node as INST or INST or, if you're really weird, INST. And yeah, so after the different nodes, you get these parameters and parameters are always separated by commas. And so here we have three different parameters, a one, a two and a three. and this is quite typical before the parameters you always see a white space but it's an optional white space between them it doesn't have to be there so this is what we're going to implement so let's just go ahead and do that so I called um, this a command before um, I've called it a keyword here um, and as I stated it has two different sections a required section and an optional section and these are just strings um, in an embedded system, you wouldn't use std string. Um, you would use a fixed size array, and I'll talk about that at the very end for people who care. Um, but if you just want a high-level overview, std string is probably the easiest way to understand it. So that's what I'm going to do. So here we have a the required section being defined in the constructor and the optional section being defined in the constructor. And the optional section is optional because you might have a keyword which is uh, something that is always required, such as the required commands in Skippy. These are these are things like test and reset and identification. The, all this entire command is required, so this entire keyword is required. Um, so the optional section is actually optional. <laughs> Um, and keywords are quite simple. They consist of an, an, a required section at the start, which is the, the capital letter section. And then if that is found, you then can parse an optional section. And the optional section, it, uh, it but obviously by the name, may exist or may not. And it always returns true. The function that looks for the optional section is always found because something that's optional always exists, kind of. So we, always, we return true after we find that. So let's have a look at how that works. Now all of these functions take two parameters, all of the parser functions that is. They take the block which is to be processed and an index which is to start processing. And they always will return a boolean. That is whether it is found or not. Or alternatively, um, if it's not an optional we're talking about, it's whether the index changes or not. So here we have a keyword, and the keyword consists of hell, uh, which is all required, so hell is required, and then low, L-O, which is optional. So if we were to process it, we can say if keyword hello with an index, and if, if that is true, then we know it's found. And I'm going to step through that function to show how it works. So when you enter the function, 
we have two parameters. We have hello and we have the index. Index is initially zero. The, when the required section is found, the index um, increments by the length of that, that section. So the, the length of that section is three, H E L one, two, three. So index is incremented by three, which means the start, the character that will be processed next is at index three. So, and in this case, as you can see from this array, is an L, a lowercase L, which means it's optional. So, and then the optional section um, begins processing at that index. So if it finds it, which it does, it increments it by the length of the section that it found. So that's a five. Now, now the index is five, which means it, it was incremented by that, that optional section of length two. Three plus two is five. There we go. So, and then it returns true because it found it. So that's sort of the structure of the um, the skippy command, but how did we actually determine whether we found a required section or an optional section? So let's step through it again. So we step in again, and now we're going to step into required. So we've taken the keyword. So we're looking for H E L, and that is required. And we're looking for it in the block H E L L O. And we're starting at index zero. So here we start, we start by initializing a temporary index to zero. And that index is going to go through the keyword and determine how much of the keyword is found and when it when it finds all of it it will kind of indicate that. So here we go. Initially we are checking H, the first letter of keyword, and and then we calculate the block index, which is just how far are we into this for loop plus the offset, which is the starting index. So if if the block index is within the bounds of the block, then we can check the current letter, which is basically the, the start point of the block for the first iteration, then the, the next um, one will be the next letter and the next one will be the next letter. So, so we're saying, is it the same letter? And if it is, if current is the same as required and it is, then we just continue. And we just churn through all these letters until either we reach the end of the keyword with index or the block index is greater than the block size, which means it breaks. And if it breaks, that means it basically wasn't found because we didn't completely find uh, we didn't completely find the keyword before the block ended. So then all we have to do is test whether the index is equal to the keyword size, because if the index has incremented by the number of characters in keyword, then we know that we actually have found every character in keyword. And in this case we have. So then all we do is say index plus equals that length of keyword. Index on its final iteration increments once more, so it actually equals the length. So the length of it is three, so we expect it to increment to three. So index is now three, which means that we have finished processing the first three characters in the block. There we go. Returns true, and that means that we can now start processing the optional section. And optional is basically identical to required, but it always returns true. So it's it's really simple to implement. It calls the required function, ignores the result, and returns true. Yep. Great. That was easy. So now you know how to kind of implement a parser for the skippy keywords. Now let's work on the next section. Okay, so now we have to implement the node. And the node is actually just a keyword with a um, with a colon in front of it. That's this. And the root node, the first node in skippy, that's this node here, is actually optional. Um, it's the only optional colon. Um, so we have to have this bool is root flag. And you don't really have to understand templates 
to understand this, you just have to know it's either true or false when you create one of these classes. And if it's true, then the colon is optional. And if it's found, it increments the index past the colon. If it's not, it doesn't. And then that means we're free to start processing the keyword. And we process the keyword exactly the same as we did in our test case. So after we process the keyword, we know that we've found the whole, the whole node. So we're free to increment the index. And then we return true because it is found. Now, if it's if it isn't the root node, the first node, then we're kind of fine to say the colon is required. So this means that it's always found and it will always increment index by one if it is found. So if the colon is found and then the keyword is found, then we can do the same thing as before. We're ready to, that means the whole node is found and we can increment index. And, and return true. So let's try that out. So a node, and we're going to do a non-root node. It's a bit simpler. And a node consists of a keyword. And the keyword here is hello. We can probably just do equals. So the node is going to be constructed from this keyword here. And we use the function exactly the same way, only now we're looking for that colon. So if we run it, it won't be found because we don't have the colon and we're going to step into it. And we step into it. And this is not a root node, so it runs the required. So the required colon in this block here is not going to be found. And we return false because we haven't found it. So that's what should happen. Now, if we add a colon here, the required colon is now inside the block and index is free to increment by one. And it has. So now we start looking for hello and we're starting at index one now and it's found and the index is now incremented to the end of the keyword. So, and we know the keyword's found. So we know we've found this node. So Skippy is really just a bunch of nodes. And all we have to do to actually implement a full Skippy parser is use these nodes um, in basically some if statements. So in this case, we're going to look at these commands. We're going to look at sense. So a standard command in Skippy would be sense. And this could be followed by voltage or something. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And we've, I've added one more thing, which is query. And I'll just look at this function before we go through this. Query just detects the question mark character increments the index if there is one and returns true. So that's all it does. So we have three nodes in this. We have the sense node, which has got the required S E N S and with an optional E at the end. Then we've got a voltage node with the required V O L T and an optional A G E. And then finally we have current, which is an option with a required C U R R and an optional E N T. Here's a table. The required section and the optional section. Now again this is not case sensitive, so these could be upper or lower case. Okay, so how do we actually process a command? Well first we have to take the command as an input. C in just gets gets a string. And then we pass the string to our sense node. Our sense node is like a function. Um, and the sense node takes the input and the index, just as before. And if it finds it, that means we know that we've found this section. We found this S-E-N-S-E, -S -E, or S-E-N-S, -S, or some variation of capitals and lower cases. So if we've done that, we're free to go to the next section. So because we're looking for sense 
voltage or we're looking for sense current we're looking for either or either of those but not both we have voltage if that's found then we process that e else if current is found we process the current so it's quite simple um, and then so in inside the processing of those two it's either a query or a, um, a, a command um, and the query in this case it's just going to print whether it's a query or not with a question mark but usually this would mean that you would either either return a value or assign a value so it's it's relatively simple so let's have a look let's run this program all right so here we go so if we step through this program with the inputs sense voltage then our input is is what we just entered into the console and our index starts at zero and if we find the word sense and because it's in here we will then index increments to the end of the word sense and then we're ready to process the next section of the command so sense here ends at character 5 so we're now ready to process from character 5 onwards and that's why index is 5 so now we don't know whether it's voltage or current so we have to test it and this if statement tests that so if the voltage is found it'll run this so it does because it is there and it moves the index to the end of the word voltage which is 13 the null character inside the raw array we're at the right place and then we just determine whether it's a query or not now it did not end in a question mark which was that query thing we talked about just before so it does not print a question mark this is an if statement in in a single line this says if this is true do this otherwise do this the colon separates the two um, it's called a ternary operator it's kind of weird yeah okay so then we just print it and there we go sense voltage found now what about current what about current so let's just continue through so sense current so of course this is the same at the start it's common between the two so we're not going to process sense again each time that would be pointless we're going to process it once and it will continue to the next node and it will go to its ch child nodes that are, that's these nodes so voltage wasn't found so index stays at five which is at the end of the word sense at the the colon here we go so now we're going to process from five onwards starting with the colon so this time we're going to step in so you can see kind of what it does so it says is the the colon there i mean it has to be because it's not a root at, so is it at character five inside the block it is and now we're ready to search for the keyword the keyword is the current so if current's found then we're going to continue we're going to assign the new end index to the parameter p index and then we return true then we know finally we have current and that's how skippy's command that's how skippy's interpreted and um, just as some variations so if you didn't if you omitted the semi the colon at the front it should still work no problem and if you emit the optional characters it should still work and um, if you now end it with a query it works still but this time it's detected that it is a query so this is the basic structure of a Skippy interpreter it's quite lightweight with the exception of using the standard string and it's something that you can put on your own devices, your own test equipment, which makes it much more usable for people who aren't, um, aren't you. So if you look at the microsupplier's Skippy specification, we basically have everything that we talked about here before. Um, we have an optional semicolon at the start. Optional things are put around square brackets. Um, and then we can have source, voltage, and then we can assign it a value or we can ask for what it is. Now Skippy is typically done by serial so that's what we're going to do. That's what we've done. 
So let's try it out. So if we input that source colon voltage, that's the, the source node, then the voltage with a single parameter of 1.2 volts, it will set the source voltage to 1.2. It doesn't return anything here, but we can query whether it was correct. And this is usually a good idea. So there we go. We, it returned 1.2 when I queried the voltage. How about source current? Source current. And we're going to assign 0 0.123 because that's awesome or something. Source current query should return the same thing and it does. So this is basically a real world example of a Skippy command interface. So of course it's not case sensitive as where our tests weren't. It does exactly the same thing. So yeah, it, it's a really useful interface. And if there's, there's a few, that here's the required commands that we have implemented. And this is why it says Skippy-ish because Skippy requires all of them, all of them. But we, there's no practical use of implementing all of them. So for the minimum viable product, we are not doing that. Maybe we'll do it later. Um, so now the required commands start in a star. That's the only difference. And they have to have that star, I think. So here we go, IDN with a query. And there you go, it returns this query string. Build, so if you wanted to get the build, you could query it. So the build, the query date of this is, the, the build date is October 12th, and the build time was at 644, uh, 40 seconds. So these, these are, this is a good command interface. It's something that is human readable, um, it's something that that is easy to extend and build build applications with uh, because all you need to do is send a simple string to the device through just a serial interface. I mean serial serial interface libraries are common as mud and yeah. If we now type this voltage command with a different voltage, S O U R C E then we see it changes. And we can of course query it. And it returns the voltage. And you've got all these other commands. And you've got all these other commands. There's, you've, got, you've got some measurement commands, you've got some output commands. Um, and the structure of these commands might change. I mean, this is pretty preliminary. I probably should have written preliminary in the document name, but this is what we got. So, Hey, cool. Okay, well, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. And I hope this kind of pattern of parses is useful to you because writing parses can be a real pain if you don't have a standardized pattern. And this is what I use generally. So, hope you have a good day. Have a good one. Bye. In production, I don't use stood string. I use a replacement using template metaprogramming. If you want to see how to do that and you want to go full node with C++, which you probably don't, uh, the link is down below. Consider this a warning.